Oh my God, I'm so hot and my back is killing me. I definitely should have asked for help. Well, what's good everybody? Welcome to Life on Beagle Road. Today, Robbie and I are gonna attempt to move our wood. Get your mind out of the gutter. That's not what I meant. Have you subscribed yet? You better subscribe. You're gonna miss all the good stuff we got going on. If you remember sometime last year, maybe the year before, actually, I can't even really keep track anymore, but I came across an incredible Craigslist haul of old barnwood beams. They've been sitting at the top of our driveway, not really stickered or, or settled or anything. So our goal today is to restack them with stickers, which I'll explain to you in a little bit, and uh, make sure that they can dry out and allow me to use. Now they're pretty dry to begin with, because they were in an old barn for quite a long time. They've been outside now for an even longer time than I wish I had. I just have nowhere else to put them but outside. My goal is to get them further up off the ground, get some more airflow in there, and start using those within the next, I don't know, six months. Courtney's been begging me to make a table, and I've been begging her not to do it yet. If you've never stacked lumber before, the very first step is to create a foundation. If you can see my stacks over here, over here, I've got four points, one in each corner, and then a beam going across those. We use the cinder block so we can get them about eight inches up off the ground, and then we'll put a beam across to support the main weight of the wood. Make sure it's level, make sure it's even, and then we can start putting our layers of wood on. But that base is absolutely crucial. So I'm gonna show you how we do that as quickly as I can and then uh, we'll talk about how you should stack your lumber and why you do it that way. Even if you're gonna go get boards from Home Depot and you bring them home, my suggestion is that some of this you should check out because it'll help you to not be disappointed later. Oftentimes when you get lumber from Home Depot, whether it's construction grade or it's the boards that they sell, they're filled with moisture. You've gotta give it time to settle into your home because your home is nowhere near the humidity the Home Depot is. All that might sound confusing, just understand this. What I'm gonna show you will help you, and then you just gotta trust me. I have a cinder block here and a cinder block down there. You can't see them, but just know that there's one here and one there. What I like to do is I take a string and I'll tie it onto one of the stones. You're good, you're good, I see it. So I have a knot here and my string is gonna come up and over the brick. What I'm gonna look for is whether or not the string is lifting up or staying tight or if I'm bending it down below the string. That lets me know if the stone needs to come up or the stone needs to go down. So Robbie's down here on the other end of the string and I'm over here on this end of the string. If you look down here, you can see that there's a gap. And what we wanna do is we wanna close that gap so that way we know that it's fairly even from here all the way up to there. There's a couple ways we can do it. We can add dirt underneath the brick I just showed you 
or we can take away dirt from the brick that's over there. I find taking away isn't always the easiest. Adding tends to be a little bit faster. But what I'll do is I'm gonna add a little bit underneath this stone and then I'm gonna recheck it and go to the other one. I'm not gonna show you that, just know that that's, that's the process. I've got all four corners down. I've got a string level across the long side and the short side to make sure that we're even this way, okay, between the short side, and that we're even this way for the long side. Next, what I need to do is put in the center blocks. This is where it gets tricky. So normally, I'd probably only put one in the center, but they're 16 feet long, and I'm worried that it's just a bit too much weight overall. So I'm gonna put two in the middle and hope that I can get it e as even as I possibly can. In order to put those middle blocks in and make them level, I'm gonna put sand underneath them. That'll help me to get just the right height that I'm looking for uh, without having to worry about it sinking back in. Most of the ground here is as packed as it's possibly gonna get, so I'm not too worried about it. So line yours up with mine. Yep, okay. And it needs to come up a considerable amount, right? We got about two inch gap there, two inch gap there, almost a half inch and a half inch. So that's where we're gonna try and put the sand. Pack it down, make sure it's not lifting up over there, make sure it's not lifting up over there, and then you know that you have a perfectly level front to back. This side here, we still probably have about half inch more, so we'll get two more scoops of sand. Robbie added some sand. I'm just gonna go like this, because that's definitely too high. Make it kinda flat, and then we'll put the cinder on top and pack it down with the cinder. Don't be afraid to lift the string, because the string will go flat then when it's time. But pack it down, check your string. Okay, we're pretty good here. We're fairly level, and remember to check the string over here and the string over there. Now, some of you are probably looking at it and saying, hey man, that's kind of overkill. I don't know that you need to be that perfect, but I have found that the flatter you can make the base, the better it's gonna be overall. We don't live in a very flat area, and I have to work with what I got, and I've had incredible success. A lot of folks are gonna do this differently, and they're gonna suggest that you do it differently. Honestly, if I had 2B stone, I would use that instead of sand. Like I said, I've had some pretty good luck with it, and so far so good, but we're okay for now. I'm gonna try and use this lumber as quickly as I can. So we're not talking about it being here for a couple years. Normally you need about a year per inch for wood to dry out. But again, this wood is already dry, so I don't need to wait that long. I just need it properly stored, so that way when I come back to it, I'm not sorry that I didn't do this. So here's the big picture. You can see I'm going across there, I haven't gone across there yet, so I have to double check that. And I went across there as well. That should give us a pretty good base. So I'm gonna double check this one. So Robbie will put his end down, I'll put mine end down. And what we're looking for is this edge right here. So my edge right here is a little low, and Robbie's edge there is a little low. And honestly, that's okay, because all we need to do is tap that, Robbie will tap his, the back side. Good, and we're perfect. All right, buddy, now you can put those four by fours in. Robbie's gonna lay the four by fours down. We'll remove the strings in a minute, but I just wanna make sure that the four by fours are even too. I'm actually trying to recycle some old four by fours so I don't have to use some new ones. You'll notice I decided not to go with the four and that was because I felt like there was enough support between the first one and the second one for these beams. They're very thick three inch by four inch. They're not gonna bend like a board would. It's only about, I think, six feet from one to the other because then there's overhang that gets me the rest of the way. Maybe seven feet, maybe eight feet. I don't think it's eight feet. I got plenty of room. So all we did was roll the string over top of the beam, those are our support beams, to make sure that everything is exactly the way we had it, with no gaps. Now we're ready to start with our first course of wood. But before we do that, what we do is put 
stickers, and they're not the stickers that you put on your kid's chest or shirt. They're actually stickers that are like one inch by one inch pieces of wood that separate the lumber itself from your beams, which these are pressure treated and I don't really want that to transfer into my, my wood itself. These are stickers and we put those between each board so that we can get proper spacing and air can move from side to side. Now that's generally the process that we're trying to accomplish. If you look at these, none of them are spaced there's really no airflow, and uh, it's going to cause a big problem. If you look at these beams here, you can tell that there's no airflow, nothing's getting through, and it's pretty terrible in terms of how to store lumber. And I'm, I'm sort of sad that I stacked them this way and never really got back to them, but, uh, you know, I don't know. No excuses. Don't do this. Down here, uh, you can see what happens if you don't have a good solid base. Part of the original base has sunk into the mud and uh, it's not providing any stability and is also causing the boards to get a slight bend in them, which I really don't want. For every bend that's in these is uh, something I gotta fix and more time wasted and more wood wasted. So that's why we're gonna get them moved from there over to here. Nearly every one of these boards is white oak, old white oak beams, either a beam or a rafter. And you can see right here that they were put in with uh, like a post and beam style, which is amazing. There are a few of these in here that are pine, which were retrofitted to sort of fix whatever was there uh, as they, there was some deterioration in the old barn. Those I'm not real worried about, but these white oak ones to me are, are just priceless. The history and the age and everything that they have to say about themselves over time are just worth every penny uh, that I can purchase them for but also every penny that I'll end up selling them for, which is even better. Of course, when I sell them, they'll be something completely different. Whoo, it's hot. All right, I had some that were already cut, sort of, they're a little long, trim them later. I put two courses already on. I went in and cut some more out of some older boards that I had. probably have about two to three thousand board feet of wood that we cut from the trees on our property so I have quite a few that I just I can spare normally I would just cut them from green lumber but I don't have any green lumber because it's all dried or drying so I just cut some from dried lumber which is not a really big deal if you cut stickers you want to try to use hardwood uh, if you can do green lumber, that's great, as long as your lumber is also green that you're using. That way it can all dry at the same time. Otherwise, it's okay to use uh, dry stickers like I'm using because my wood is also dry. The moisture content is, is very minimal. It's not really a big deal. So I'll show you what I've been kind of up to. As it turns out, many of them were not 16 feet. I have anywhere between like 10 and 16 feet, which is super annoying because as I go to stack them, they didn't fit. So I've had to make some piles off to the side I'm going through the main pile here, trying to pick out all the sizes that are pretty much the same and then slowly moving my stickers in, which also stinks because you want to try to line your stickers up in a straight line. Mine are going to kind of go like that. Take a look at what's going on. Okay, I'm all done. It's time for me to 
Go take a shower, eat some dinner, I don't really know. But I got about seven rows, 12 in each row. That's a lot of wood. I took out anything that was total garbage. Uh, and I took out all of the pine stuff because I don't want any of it. All of it will uh, become either firewood inside, the hardwood at least, or firewood outside, pine. Or if I can use it for some reason, I will, but it's just going to hang out over there. This is the new pile, nicely stacked. Okay, still got to trim those off, it's all good. And this is where it all was. This is the old pile. That's, that's where all the junk is. Honestly, as I went through it, it's kind of upset with the number of pieces of pine that were in there. Like I remember it from before, but this time around, I paid even more attention. There were at least like 30 pieces of total, total all pine, total junk. Like I said, I'll, I'll find a reason to use them. Um, we make so many things for the farm that they'll definitely come in handy. I'm just not gonna worry about stacking them nice and pretty. Uh, the ones that are all warped, they're just gonna go burn in the campfire. So I hope you enjoyed my little lesson, tip, tutorial, whatever you want to call it. If you ever have to stack any wood, now you know what you need to do. If you ever get lumber from the hardware store, it's pretty much the same process, only you don't necessarily need to use a base. You can lay it on your basement floor, garage floor, whatever. Just uh, put some stickers in. That'll help it to dry out. Make sure there's no bowing and you're set. Have a great day, folks. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe. See you later.